Greetings this morning from Central Church, Pastor Alan Childs. We're going to go today in the King James Bible, looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, turning to verses 1 through 5. We're going to be talking about, for a few minutes, the subject of accountability. Accountability with regard to our calling, first and foremost, unto God in service. And second, accountability to all in our service to God. Starting reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Our last verse, verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsel of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. We're going to be talking a little bit here for just a few minutes about a very positive subject when applied in our lives. It's the biblical teaching in, uh, in, in all of the doctrines and all the Gospels about accountability. Accountability covers a lot of territory. We're going to focus a little bit here for a few minutes and I'm going to bring it home by giving you an example of where accountability comes into play in our everyday lives. Now first and foremost is our accountability unto God. From the earliest beginnings of Scripture we're shown where that man's accountability of God is key to everything in the management of his life. And more importantly, his spiritual connection, his spiritual relationship with God. It brings us to a place of identity. Many great prophets, great characters from the Bible will be identified by us by their accountability unto God, such as Abraham. We call him the father of the faithful. And Abraham made decisions of accountability to God in in every aspect of his life. First off in his decision to leave everything that he was connected with to follow after where God would take him in life on his journey. And then we find that Abraham was also found accountable in stewardship and that when he recognized the servant of God in Malchazdic that he was moved upon with a passion that he would gather together the best that he had and give honor and support to the work of the minister Melchizedek as the king of peace, the king of Salem. And then the greatest of all accountability that Abraham exemplified to us was when God spoke to him and the thing that he held most precious. And in our human wisdom, we can't even go to this place in our thinking to where that God would ask him to bring his promised child son of his old age and bring him as a sacrifice unto the Lord. Meaning simply that our most precious things in life must come, even those things must come second to our calling in God. Of course, we know the story that the angel stayed his hand. Abraham was that committed. But you know, it's easy for us by reading and by the disconnection of our lives by time to Abraham to look at that and not see 
just what kind of commitment that really was. It's easy for us in words for us to say that we could make the commitment unto God that we would give anything to the Lord, that we would do anything the Lord asked. When we fail him in the most simple task of just getting up and praying our devotions to him, praying and asking God's guidance and leadership in the management of our day at the beginning of our day. If we can't do such a simple thing, how can we in any way comprehend what Abraham was asked to do of the Lord and was faithful, faithful to follow? And when it comes to what we just read as far as the mysteries of God that would be brought to light, we can't become so carried away in ourselves that we are not accountable unto God just because God uses us from time to time. Let me give you a little example in closing without mentioning any names. Anytime we give godly counsel to someone about serious personal matters in life, we must first of all make sure that we are qualified in God. In being qualified in God, we must first bring ourselves to the place to understand, have I experienced what this person is bringing to me for advice? Have I properly been trained not only in scripture, but in the practical application of that scripture to the subject that we're talking about? Does my life experience show that I have went through anything comparable that, that I would be able to find common ground with the situation that we're being called upon to do counsel. As a licensed counselor, I am legally qualified to give pastoral counseling. I have legal license for that. But you don't have to have a legal counselor's license to be able to be used of God to give good, godly, helpful advice to someone. We find the scriptures gives us that authority when we do it properly according to the word of God. In fact, as servants of God, as born again Christians, to be a witness of the light of God is our purpose. But a man was talking to me yesterday and he had waited some time to open up. Uh, first off, he had to qualify me by my life. He, the man has worked with me for a while, worked around me. Uh, God has moved upon me from a couple of particular occasions to go over and greet the man. And in one case, to actually give him a word from God, that God had compelled me. And I told him, I said, what I'm telling you, God gave me to tell you. Now, there's an accountability in that. Accountability, first off, to tell the absolute truth and to deliver the package exactly as God gave it to you. And friend, if you're unsure that God truly did give you what you are to deliver to someone else, you better pray. And you better make sure that you're hearing from God because accountability for someone's life and advice is a very serious matter. It has implications on their decisions, their family, and in many cases it, it, it can make the difference for whether or not they are successful or a failure in a certain situation. So this man over a period of a few weeks, came to trust me. By that, he watched my behavior as I was around him. He saw me in situations where others around me would use cursings and swearings. And I would remind them, if you bless something, it'll cooperate a lot more than it will when you curse it. And he began to see that I was accountable for my own testimony. In other words, he saw that the situation didn't dictate my actions, that my actions were dictated by my accountability to a conscience before God. So the man trusted me with some very private matters. 
And as we sat and talked, I listened intently. We visited for hours. The conversation went into some very deep places in the man's life. The man definitely has a use in the kingdom of God. He definitely has a call. But he had some issues that, that needed to be brought to the table before the Lord. And as we did the conversations, of course, I engaged my human mind, as we all would in the situation. And I had to hold myself back at times from giving what seemed to be the obvious advice to Wade and to hear what was in many ways confessions of failures, which sometimes we have to weigh these things into the scenario to know what went wrong or to help identify what went wrong and give the advice based upon what God gives us that would bring this person to a better standing in the relationship first with God and then to help them sort out where they are in life. Well, to make short of this, we went through scenarios including marriage, divorce, family, relationships, and what the person felt it would take to make them happy in life and in their station in life and in relationship with other people. In weighing all this very seriously before the Lord, we looked at the scriptural situation regarding marriage. We looked at all of those things. And then I told the man, with all sincerity, he and I, no one else listening. I said, it is very important that we be happy in life, that we find a place of fulfillment, that we, we not go through life lonely. But first and foremost, what I'm going to tell you, and this is what I told him, you need to find a place where it's just you and God, no one else, where you can be uninterrupted, uninterrupted and where you can spend some time, cut the phone off, shut the door, make sure it's just you and God, find a place and pray. Pray that the Lord will come into your mind and come into your heart. And that the Lord will allow you to see his will, his design for you. Does the Lord decide to go back and fix something that is broken? What does God expect? What does God want? Make no decision about any matter in life in the management of our future without first asking God to please, please give me guidance and help me and show me my direction. Oh, there was a lot of things I could have told him. But my advice to him was hear from God first. Find out where you stand with God. Repent of any and all issues of sin. This particular man had already made that decision to repent long ago. But I reminded him when we are fallen and we need to get up. We've got to dust ourselves off from sin, where we are, where we stand, in order to move forward with clear vision. And when we have done that, we are prepared and we are ready for the mysteries of God to be shared. Shared with God's prophet. Shared with God's pastor. God's minister. Whoever he may be. I, there's a man of God in your life that God can lead you to, that can help you along that path. In closing, I'll make this statement to you. Yes, first and foremost, we are accountable unto God. But as stewards and ministers, the word minister means to serve, we are accountable to everyone. We're accountable to God, we're accountable to ourselves, and we're accountable to everyone 
we see everywhere because our witness is seen of them the witness of our testimony and the value of our advice will be judged and weighed according to our testimony in the witness of our lives. This is Pastor Bandera Central Church inviting you today to find that place of accountability with God. Find the time wherever you have to put it in your schedule to get along with God and ask God to guide you in all management of your life. In Jesus' holy name, have a wonderful, blessed day.